Hello everybody. Uh, so this week's video is on feeling trapped. Many of you um, have messaged me and in the Rebuild Your Life group and said that you feel really trapped and stuck in your situation and how do you get out of that? With great difficulty I would say but uh, I'm not joking about it but it, it, it feels impossible when you're in it so lots of people at different times in their life feel stuck in a situation uh, it can be a job it can be trying to get a house sold and not able to move on and get on with other plans and trips and things that you want to do um, because you, you you can't you can't move um, and uh, many of you know you can get stuck in a marriage that seems to have gone wrong and it's nightmarish and s some people really get stuck in relationships that are downright abusive and scary um, but at the end of the day that feeling of stuckness is a feeling now you can say there are very real external reasons why somebody might be stuck in a marriage for example um, it can be that you've got nowhere to go to, you've got nowhere to live, you've got no money, you've got no family, you've got no support network around you. And, you know, those um, external factors, of course, feel very, very uh, constrictive and like a real genuine obstacles to get over. Um, what are you going to do when you haven't got the, the, the resources that you need? <clears throat> so all of that um, perceived as real um, constriction creates internal and triggers old feelings of being trapped and stuck. It can even trigger um, feelings that babies have when it's a difficult birth of uh, being a struggle to get out, to move ahead, to move forward. And I know this because I studied prenatal and perinatal psychology at great expense in terms of uh, money and energy and um, yeah, time. So, but some of those old uh, primal feelings get triggered where it feels, you, you, you feel helpless powerless and then hopeless and you can go into despair and feel like there is no way out and that especially happens if you happen to be trying to get out of an abusive marriage where your partner was saying if you go and if you take my children I will kill you and you know you've every reason to believe that they will probably do that so that is feeling really stuck and trapped. Um, but what I want to say is those feelings, feelings are not facts. Feelings are feelings. And they may be very real feelings. I'm not wishing to uh, minimize them. But, um, you know, you, you don't have to continue being stuck like that. Um, it doesn't have to be that way. And I know because I've been there. And this seems trivial when you're faced with what seems like very real obstacles and blocks. You'll see a couple of videos ago, I did a video about change your life, change your mindset. When you change your perspective, uh, uh, i.e. your mindset, um, it makes a huge difference. So what is the secret? Now, it really is, it's simple, but it's not easy. And it's this, while you're focused on all those things that you can't do, while you're fa focused on the obstacles, you can't see a way out. So you have to shift. It's like shifting from the glasses half empty to shifting to the glasses half full. You have to shift your focus to what is it you need. And I, I remember a time in my life where I was feeling in that place and just boiling it down to 
I need a place to live, I need an income, and I need to not have to leave the children because one was a fairly newborn. And kind of not seeing any way I could do that because, you know, there was no money, no resources, no support network, and no family. So how does that happen? Well, it happens by letting go of it because it is so impossible and so uh, unachievable in the, 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 the mindset that you're in. The best thing is to accept the things I cannot change and courage to change the things I can. So you shift to focusing on what is it you want in place of or instead of what you've got and you know you're not going to be able to change your partner that's the bottom line and you have to accept you cannot change another person but you can change you so i just want to say using the metaphor of the caterpillar the caterpillar when before it ever gets to be a butterfly the caterpillar uh, goes through a process of, of wrapping itself in a, in a chrysalis. Now, it's a tight, cold, dark place in there. And by that time, before the butterfly comes out, the caterpillar is turned into a mulch uh, before it starts to uh, build the organs of the butterfly. And the caterpillar has no idea of what it's going to become. It doesn't know that. And it's metamorphosis. And we actually go through times in our lives when we have a metamorphosis. Life is a real struggle and it feels like death. And we can see no way ahead and no future. But mostly that's because we focus on the difficulty, we focus on the problem. And we know from that perspective, we cannot see a way out. But I want you to take this on board. We are more than just this three-dimensional human being. We are multi-dimensional beings. We have souls and spirits and other aspects to us that mostly we don't ever tap into. So when you just let go of trying to sort everything out in your own mind and you let go and you allow something greater than yourself to come into the frame, all kinds of things happen. And so I'm going to read something that I, I, I do a daily reading every day from this nice book. It's... Um, the Book of Awakening by Mark Nepo, um, Having the Life You Want by Being Present to the Life You Have. It's a lovely book and I just find it inspiring and I felt inspired today to share this today's reading with you. So here it is and it's called The Chick Being Born. When in the midst of great change, it is helpful to remember how a chick is born. From the view of the chick, it is a terrifying struggle, just like you're having. Confined and curled in a dark shell, half formed, the chick eats all its food and stretches to the contours of its shell. It begins to feel hungry and cramped. Eventually, the chick begins to starve and feels suffocated by the ever-shrinking space of its world. Finally, its own growth begins to crack the shell, and the world, as the chick knows, is coming to an end. Its sky is falling. As the chick wriggles through the cracks, it begins to eat its shell. In that moment, growing but fragile, starving and cramped, its world breaking, the chick must feel like it's dying. Yet, once everything it has relied on 
falls away, the chick is born. It doesn't die, but it falls into the world. The lesson is profound. Transformation always involves the falling away of things we have relied on, and we are left with the feeling that the world as we know it is coming to an end, because it is. Yet the chick offers us the wisdom that the way to be born while still alive is to eat our own shell. When faced with great change in self, in relationship, in our sense of calling, we somehow must take in all that has enclosed us, nurtured us, incubated us, so when the new life is upon us, the old is within us. Now, I know from my own experience that there comes a point when you have so many years of, I can't get out, I'm stuck, where can I go, what can I do, I have no money, and we do all that over and over and over. There comes a point where you are so ready to grow as your own person and not revolving your life around this other person when you're ready to really let go, you will push out and let the pieces fall where they may. And in my case, just if there's a God there, a divine help. And, you know, I could read other passages from other books that when you step out and commit to moving on with your life, providence steps in and providence does step in. So I want to encourage you and look, I can look back on that period in my life and I can sit here today making this video encouraging you because I know what it feels like. And that experience, awful though it was, and I wouldn't wish to repeat it, it really helps me to understand where you are and to be able to give you a hand up and say, come on, you can do this. So I'll say more about this in the forthcoming videos. So if you want to be notified of more videos, please subscribe and like and leave comments. And I need encouragement too. So we'll all work together and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.